Hello students, this is Mr. McAllen, and in this video we're going to discuss odd versus even symmetry and, and how to determine if a function has odd or even symmetry. In some cases, a function may have neither symmetry, which is the case most of the time, but we want to discuss these cases in particular when we have odd versus even symmetry. So, let's just first take a look at what odd symmetry and even symmetry looks like. So, if I look at a function, let's say like y equals x squared, and I were to graph that, it would be a parabola, and it would have even symmetry because what happens on the left is identical to what happens on the right. This is called even symmetry, and it doesn't have to pass through the origin. It just has to be, if you cut the graph in half right down the, the y-axis, the y you would see the left and the right looking like a mirror image. On, if we have an odd function, what you have is a function where it's called rotationally symmetric. So if you were to graph an odd function and then you were to spin the graph around 180 degrees, the graph would look identical to the way it did when it started. This is called odd or rotational symmetry. We have some rules for both of those. So for even, we have a function rule where it's f of negative x equals f of x. For odd, we have the rule where it says f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. Very similar rules, but both have to be tested. So let's start out with a function and test out the symmetry algebraically. Let's say that you're asked to find out if the, the square root of x squared plus 3 has odd or even symmetry. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to first, um, well, let's say this is f of x, so we stay with the notation. So you already know what f of x is equal to. Let's find out what f of negative x is. So I'm going to plug negative x in to the function, square it, add 3 to it, and then square root it and see if that equals what I had originally. And when I do the algebra, negative x times negative x equals positive x squared, which shows me that I have x squared plus 3 under the radical. This is identical to what I started with with f of x, therefore the function is even. <clears throat> now, you may not believe me, but if I put the function into the graphing calculator, and you look at it, uh, and the graphing calculator is Desmos, you can see that upon plotting it, we have, um, you can see that the function is symmetric about the y-axis. So graphically proving that it's an even function. Let's look at a function that's an odd function and we'll test its symmetry. So now we're going to test for odd symmetry. And remember the rule for that is f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. This symmetry is one where whatever is happening in one quadrant should happen in the diag diagonally opposite quadrant. So it's either happening here to here or it's happening here to here. So let's try out the uh, symmetry rule. So we uh, let's say the function is given right here. So it says the rule says um, to plug negative x inside first. So I'm going to do f of negative x. And I'm going to see what that gets me. Negative x cubed minus negative x. And when I simplify it, I get negative x cubed plus x. Because remember, negative x times negative x times negative x is negative x cubed. And now let me check out what negative f of x is. I'll put a negative out in front of the function of x cubed minus x, and I'll end up getting negative x cubed plus x, which does in fact equal what f of negative x was. Since these two are equal, then it's an odd function. Let's check that out on Desmos. So I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to put in x cubed minus x. And as you can see, that 
whatever is happening in the one quadrant over here is happening identically in this quadrant. So it's like there's rotational symmetry and our function rule is verified by our graph. Hopefully this uh, video on symmetry has helped you. The next video in the in the series is going to be on um, finding asymptotes. So uh, the two videos go together with the same section. So remember the odd versus even test and the next video will be on function symmetries. Hello students. Now we're going to work on finding horizontal or vertical asymptotes of a graph. Now the number one way to find vertical asymptotes in a graph is to look at the denominator and factor it and try to see if you can't find any um, anything that would make you divide by zero because that typically in most cases will cause a vertical asymptote. So in this problem we're going to take y equals um, we're going to just rewrite this as being x over what the factors are x minus 2 x plus 1 and because we could factor it um, we have a nice easy shot at what some vertical asymptotes could be the vertical asymptotes are going to be when x minus 2 equals 0 or at x equals 2 or when x plus 1 equals 0 and that would be when x equals negative 1 now this is an easy way to find vertical asymptotes but when we want to look for horizontal asymptotes we have to consider the function as a whole so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot it on Desmos and this is a way that for this chapter we're going to identify vertical and horizontal asymptotes so when I go to Desmos I'm going to put into the function um, let me just take another look at that function it's going to be x over x divided by the quantity x squared minus 2x I think it's minus 1 I'm just going to double check that oh it's at minus x minus 2 so let me change that minus x minus 2 so when we look at this graph we can see that we clearly have um, three asymptotes and we got to make sure we label them correctly. So I'm going to just cut and paste this graph into our Desmos file. Uh, not Desmos file, you know, into the file over here. And we'll work on it specifically. So the horizontal asymptotes are going to be, let me do this with, um, I'll do this with a green line. So here we have an asymptote at x equals negative 1, like we said we would. We have one at x equals 2. And now we have our horizontal asymptote. You can see the function is heading to a horizontal value at y equals 0. So all I want you to be able to do in this part of the year is graph a function and be able to write the correct equations for both horizontal and vertical asymptotes. And if you can do this, then as we go through the rest of the year, we'll learn all the more advanced methods for how we do this. So hopefully this video has helped you in terms of identification of horizontal and vertical asymptotes, and I look forward to hearing your comments in class.